Welcome to the Let the Stray Show, your one-stop destination for intriguing conversations with extraordinary individuals who are boldly navigating life outside the conventional norms. Our host, Scott Fullerton, is thrilled to embark on this journey of discovery with all of you. The Left a Straight Show, we believe that every person's story is unique, and it's our mission to showcase the diversity of human experiences. We bring you the untold stories of fascinating people who identify as LGBT plus and allies, pushing boundaries, breaking stereotypes, and making a positive impact in our communities. On this show, we bring you a diverse lineup of inspiring guests, from activists to artists, and entrepreneurs to entertainers, and everything in between. We dive deep into their personal journeys, discovering the pivotal moment that has shaped their lives and careers. You can expect thought-provoking discussions on a wide range of topics, from LGBTQ rights, social justice to arts, culture, mental health, and more. Our guests are change makers who share their insights, challenges, and triumphs, igniting conversation that promotes empathy, understanding, and love. So whether you're part of the LGBTQ community or an ally looking to expand your knowledge and show your support, the Love to Straight show is for you. Together, we can build bridges of understanding and acceptance, celebrating the beauty of what makes us all unique. So sit back, grab a drink, and get ready for the show. Alrighty, everyone. Welcome back to my next interview right here on the Left of Straight Show, where we discuss all things LGBTQ with personalities and celebrities from entertainment, foodies, books, music and advocacy, and of course with our straight allies. I'm your host, as always, Scott Fullerton, and today I'm excited and scared to have a special guest with me here in the spooky month of October. The creator, producer, and host of the Scream Queer podcast is with me, Ralph Anthony's on the phone in a super secret location, so we're reverting back to our first audio-only interview of the season. Ralph talks horror stories, true crime, LGBTQ issues, the paranormal, and reviews of horror entertainment, as well as Liz, as well as letting his audience ask him questions from time to time, all through a queer point of view. I've been following Ralph Social for the past three or four months, and although our regular listeners know I'm just not that into the horror genre personally, I love seeing people kill it in their podcast promotion, and Ralph is the frickin' bomb diggity. We've been chatting on socials for a while now, and I thought it was the perfect time to have him share his podcast journey here in October. If you like a good story, a strong voice, and someone who knows how to have fun, you're going to love this interview. So please join me as we delve into the world of this thrilling podcast and get a glimpse a little bit into his personal life, experiences, and insights. For the first time on Left the Straight Show, here's Mr. Ralph Anthony. Ralph, how we doing, buddy? Hello. I am doing well. How are you today? I am doing fantastic. I'm so excited to have you on the show. We've talked about off air and on social media. I am not a huge fan of horror, which we can go into in a bit, but <laughs> I just think you kill it with your promotions and the way you, and your decision for what you do in your episodes. You are doing fantastic, my friend. Thank you so much. I I just want to first start off by saying, like, just thank you for being so kind to me. Um, that intro was amazing. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm really grateful to be here with with you today. Well, I am excited as well, my friend. I always start off with two questions for us virgins here on the show. So <laughs> let's start off by letting my listeners know a little bit about you. Where did you grow up, and what kind of a kid were you growing up? Well, I grew up in Fresno, California. Um, it doesn't really have the greatest reputation. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I'm 33 years young now. And uh, growing up for me, it was a, the typical story of, you know, a child who kind of knew who he was fairly early. I think I knew I was gay when I... I think I was like five, like I had an attraction to other boys. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I mean, along the way, there was its challenges. I mean, my parents split when I was really young. Um, I went through the whole bullying in, in school. Um, but I mean, here we are today. I mean, that I, I feel like 
we kind of have to go through that to kind of shape who we are now. Right. Yeah. Well, we know you're young because you're still admitting to your age. So I like that. I'm impressed by that all of a sudden because <laughs> I haven't told my real age in decades, I don't think. But I hear you. <laughs> Very cool. And you went right into my second question I always ask all my new guests about when did you first come out to yourself, which you kind of just said. But where do oh, you yeah. <laughs> think you first kind of started finding your LGBTQ tribe? When did that start happening? Um, I would have to say my senior year of high school. Um, that's also the time, the time when I came out publicly and yeah, I just, I, I got my first boyfriend and then he just like exposed me to this entirely different world. Um, gay parties and, uh, like prides and all that, all that good stuff. So I was prob I think I was 18. Nice. Very yeah. cool. Well, and let's talk about this interest in horror. Where did that interest spurn from? Have you always been kind of interested? Do you have certain genres you like more than the other? But talk about where just this love happened before the podcast even. Okay. So this happened fairly early as well. Uh, I was at a family barbecue. I believe I was like six. So I was really young. And there was this buzz going around about a little horror film called Scream. And everyone was just <laughs> talking about it. They were like, oh my gosh, like, have you seen this film? Like, you have to guess who the killer is. It's like a whole murder mystery thing. And they were like, Anthony, we are going to watch a scary movie. Like, do you want to go into a different room? And I was like, no, I'll watch it. So I'm watching this film and... I'm like really entertained and scared because it's a really <laughs> bloody film. And I'm, I was just like, I think I was just like so fascinated. Like, like what the hell am I watching? But I love it. So I think that's kind of where that started. And from then on, it just, I was so fascinated with the horror section at Blockbuster or <laughs> um, any movie store. And yeah, I and I've I've always leaned more towards uh, slashers for whatever reason. I mm. can enjoy all subgenres, but I think slashers are my go-to. Gotcha. And so, when did the idea of doing a podcast about this um, this hobby of yours come to come to be? I want to say. I had a I had a like itch to like jump into it. Um I believe it was like I want to say 2018 2019 but again um I was working a really 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 time consuming job that just it it was awful. So I couldn't mm. really like it didn't allow me to be creative or I mean even have a personal life. Like it it really took over. Um, so I, that, I put that on the, on the, on the back burner. And at first the podcast was going to just talk about, oh my gosh, this is really like embarrassing, but it was going to talk about, <laughs> um, at that time, I think the, the big thing was like makeup and beauty gurus. And it was just going to be like, kind of like a, like a, like a gossip podcast talking about all gotcha. that drama that was going on. And I'm really glad that didn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, and then it wasn't until last year, 2022, um, where I just started posting like different scenes to, uh, from different horror films. And I got a lot of really great feedback cause I would post it and then I would give like my insight on it and how it made me feel. And yeah. And then I think from then I was like, you know what? I think I want to do a podcast, but then I was like, I don't want to just talk about like horror films. Like, like what else is out there that I can share? So I was like, Oh my gosh, true crime. Oh my gosh. Paranormal. Why don't I do a segment where I answer questions where I, I share people's personal horror stories. And it all just kind of, I kind of rushed into it a little bit. <laughs> uh, Cause I do have a first, I, I, I have a first season, but it is, um, it's archived right now just because it was a very it's a very different podcast than what i am now um will i release it maybe but yeah it, it just it focused too much on <laughs> because some people would send in questions about like sex 
and it just <laughs> it got really raunchy there and i was like you know what this wasn't my like original vision so uh, but yeah so it's essentially a horror true crime podcast but it it tackles a, a lot more than just that i mean i talk about lgbtq plus topics um just really scary things that are going on in our world right now um because like i always say like there's nothing more scarier than real life and yeah and right. then it just <laughs> we're kind of just growing from all of that i hear that I definitely feel you there. I did, uh, we talked off air, I did my first five seasons audio only. And I'm basically a very lazy person, so I didn't know how to edit. I didn't have the best equipment. So I really like some of my older interviews, but I'm kind of scared to bring them back. They're all archived away because they sounded so bad. And I was kind of so bad <laughs> at it for the first two years. So it's like, I don't know. I, I hear you on that. But the, you're killing it now. And I got to talk to you. I mean, I said it off air as well. You have just the voice for doing this. You have an amazing radio voice. I listened to a few of your Q and A's because I'm not listening to the horror shit. Sorry about that. But I was kind of surprised to hear you actually grew up with kind of a speech impediment. Talk about that for a minute. Yes, I. I mean, if you couldn't already tell, like I kind of drag out my sentences like that. Um, it's something I've always struggled with. Um, yeah, I've just, I've, I've always had a stutter. I, I think when I get overwhelmed or I like want to speak so quickly, it just, I just kind of get like mind jumbled and then it, my, just my, my, my words just get very jumbled. But I mean, it's, right. the, the podcast has definitely helped. It's really helped. Um, it's really helped me slow down and just like flow smoothly when, when speaking. Right. Could you tell? I, I I got it, but I think that's just kind of cool the way that the podcast has helped you overcome that and everything. And like I said, you have the most amazing radio voice as well. I just love to hear you talk about everything. It's amazing. Thank you. Um, let's kind of talk about I mean, we your interest started with Scream, you said. Is that where the name of the podcast came from? Where did you get the name of your podcast? Well, the name of the podcast is a play on the title Scream Queen. So think of Jamie Lee Curtis in Halloween. Think of Neff Campbell in the Scream franchise. They are basically like titled Scream Queen. So I was like, you know what? How can I play off of that? So I was like, you know what? Let's do Scream Queer podcast. And <laughs> ta-da! Um, so yeah, I think that's probably one of the biggest misconceptions. Like, yes, I do pose in my ghost face cosplay. I do talk about the Scream franchise quite often, but the podcast isn't just talking about the Scream franchise. I think that would get very boring after a, a few episodes. I mean, I, I can only talk about that for so many episodes. Yeah, it's tough because it's not episodic, right? It's only a couple of movies. So, I mean, yeah. you can go so far in that and then you're kind of uh, stuck. But like I said, you do so many different things with the true crime. That true crime is such a huge thing these days. I mean, there's about 8 there's million so podcasts devoted <laughs> to it. But you do a, you really kind of handle it so well from everywhere, from like 9-11 calls and things like this. Where do you get your ideas? What inspires you to do the true crime bits? Honestly? Just as much as I hate to admit it, <laughs> um, just either these are cases that I've I've heard of and wanted to like do more research in on, or just scrolling through TikTok. As basic really? as that, yeah, because <laughs> I guess I've just liked a lot of true crime content, so. I mean, I get all of these like nine month one calls and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's a good one. Save that for later. Oh my gosh, this one, save that one. And then I will type in on Google, be like this, this, and this, and then I'll do all my research on it. I essentially create like little essays for, for each case. And then I, I deepen up my voice and I <laughs> read them. Nice. I, I just couldn't, I had a true crime podcast or LGBTQ true crime. That's all they do. And he has his own podcast network and his network, I think has had 
5 million downloads in the last two years or something. It's just crazy how much that true crime goes for now. Hi, are they looking for a new talent? I'm totally kidding. (laughs) (laughs) I'll I'll arrange an introduction, that's for sure. Um, If I could speak about it, I would, because it is definitely is uh, is very lucrative. Thank you. But talking about your voice, I also want to talk about your production value. Um, I am lazy as hell, so I basically (laughs) do editing. I kind of edit as basic as I can. I never did the audio before. But you're fun, though. When I listen to you, you have all these little sound effects for things and little everything that kind of go through it. That's got to take some time, but it makes it so much fun. What decided you make you go that route? Well, I, from personal preference, when I listen to some podcasts and even audiobooks, like when they insert different sounds or there's there's creepy music i feel like that kind of like takes you into that world more and right like my goal is just to kind of have each episode be like little mini audiobooks or mini movies that you can like imagine um because i am very inspired by like as a child i was also obsessed with um art bell's radio show coast to coast where he talked about all right. all the, like ghosts and like bigfoot and i was obsessed um so i mean that's that's kind of another reason why i haven't really gone to video that and because i am also lazy <laughs> but <laughs> yeah no i just i i want each each episode to be its own experience I love that. I forgot about Art Bell's Coast to Coast. There was some creepy yes. stuff on that show. Yes. Oh, it my was God. Insane. I got to tell you, I don't like horror for two reasons. There's really only, well, maybe three. But first, I'm, I'm not a big blood and guts person, so I don't even watch army movies. So I don't <laughs> like horror movies that have a lot of blood and guts. The second reason is kind of homophobic. When I was young, probably 14 <laughs> or 15, I went to a horror movie with a bunch of friends and I'm a jumper, right? You you startle me. I'm going to jump. I'm going to. Yeah. So we, I think it was like, it was like the first Halloween or maybe my bloody Valentine, something back in the day. Right. Yeah. The really scary ones. And a scene came on and I reached over and I grabbed my friend's hand, this guy, and, everybody, and I, I got teased for like being, how queer are you holding someone's hand because you got scared? Oh and so gosh. it was like, and I was still coming to terms with all that. So it's like a little homophobic in me kept me away from <laughs> horror. And, and, I, and I just don't like to jump. So it's like, I'm trying to get over it, but I just, I'm not able to get into the genre whatsoever. But it just, it's such a powerful, um, it brings so many people together to talk about, and you have such great interaction with your fans. These questions, it sounds like you get lots of questions. Talk about the fan interaction and how that's been for you since the podcast started. Oh my gosh. Uh, It's just, it's been great. Um, At first I mainly was just getting questions from people I knew or like word of mouth. And then it wasn't until I believe it was May where I started to notice um, some traction on my social media. And I'm like, wait a minute, we're getting somewhere now. And I've kind of created this like little community almost. And it's just, it's so cool because if I hadn't pursued this, I wouldn't have like talked to like such awesome and very talented people And I think that's probably my favorite aspect about being a podcaster um, is just being able to connect with people like, like you and just have these conversations about like horror and just everything. So, I mean, that whole aspect has just been so great. 
it is really cool when you get to talk to their podcasters. I enjoy it a lot. I mean, it's I don't think there's really a competition in the podcast field. I think we're all kind of doing our own thing for our own reasons. And everyone has a great story to tell. So I love kind of hearing from them. Like I said, I don't listen to your genre, but I love the way you work your podcast. I love your voice. I love and you talk about people kind of catching on social media. You do all your own graphics because your graphics are amazing. I do, yes, yes. I've wow. since, since since I was in in high school, I've just always loved like graphic art and just all of that. That is very cool. And you've done collabs in the past. What kind of um, what draws you to someone to kind of do a collaboration like that? Just something you find interesting. Do you got do people come to you? How's how's that been working out for you doing these different collabs? I saw you done with a couple of wine gays. You've done it with a couple yes. of other a girl that I said I mean you've had some fun with them. Yes. Um I think it just comes down to I mean DMs like either one of us well because okay so what I've been loving also is just I'll sometimes post like, hey, everyone, like send me podcasts or send me episodes that you want me to listen to or check out. And because I really do like love going and discovering new podcasts because, I mean, like you said, like it's not really a competitive world. I I think because we can all – identify with like the struggle and and time that really goes into just one episode um so yeah i mean i've i've discovered some of these podcasts and like i'll either reach out to them or they'll reach out to me and be like oh my gosh i love your podcast and then they're like oh my gosh we should do a collab and it kind of just goes from there that's awesome i love that yeah and talk about um What's maybe a experience you've had from your podcast, either through interaction with a fellow podcaster or with a question you've got that's really kind of uh, impacted how you feel about doing the podcast? Any kind of memorable moments? I just, I actually just did a collab recently. Um as recent as I believe it was on this past Saturday. And what this creator told me, it just, it, it kind of hit me in all the like emotional places. <laughs> I, I mm. got teary eyed. I was like, Oh my gosh, like, Oh my gosh. So basically um, she had just, she was just commending me just like what I'm doing and just being like kind in this community because there can be a lot of nastiness out there and sure. like sharing other people's story no matter how big or how small my platform is like i i just i want to share other people's experiences and and stories and she just like really pointed that out and for someone else to like point that out that like i mean i'm not trying to like i i don't want to how do I say this? I don't want my my horn tooted, but just to hear that from <laughs> someone else, it was like, oh my gosh, like what I'm doing is is actually like doing something here. So I mean, I think that's when I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm supposed to be doing this. That's amazing. And yes, you are, my friend. And talk about um I mean, you do some fun things with the questions. You, you, <laughs> you, you're very self-depreciating. It's like, okay, we're going to go through these questions. I'm going to muck it up. Be sure to take a drink every time I do. Where do you come up with these little fun <laughs> things? How do you make it fun like that for other people? I, I mean, if those close to me, they would consider me a clown. I, I think one of my favorite things to do is to make people laugh. I will say the most outrageous and ridiculous things. Um, I have a very dark sense of humor as well. Um, so, it, I mean, for my newer friends, it, it's been kind of hard to, like, see how far I could go because I can go really far. Um, but, <laughs> but, yeah, I just, I don't know. I'm just like, because if I'm going to mess up, like, let's make it like a whole drinking game. Or I, I just think, like, making fun of yourself is kind of therapeutic in a, in some sort of twisted way. And I'm right. really good at that. Yeah. <laughs> nice. 
Now, I do a lot of interviews on my show. You do these collaborations. Is there anyone you'd really like to interview? Um, is there anyone you've brought on the show yet or someone's kind of on the bucket list of people you want to bring on the show to interview about the genre or true crime or something? Um, yes, actually. Um, I don't think I got into this when I was telling you how I got that like push to really pursue podcasting, but I listened to a podcast um with daniel harris and scout compton taylor who um are really big in the horror world uh daniel harris is known for being the little girl from halloween four and mm. her and halloween um but yeah the, so like their podcast it's like they do true crime here and there but they mostly just talk about like um women's struggles and and motherhood and sex and all of that so that was kind of my inspiration um so i mean i would really love to sit down with one of them or even both of them in the future <laughs> right nice and talk about we're in the spooky season now we're in october um do you have any Are you ready for it uh, sh- I am, you know, I'm the, I'm the weird, I've always been the weird gay. I'm the Christmas gay. 90% of the gays are the Halloween gays and 10% Christmas. <laughs> I'm the 90% Christmas, 10% Halloween kind of guy. Yeah. Um, just because I've always been a big guy, so I can never find a good costume, to be honest. But that's beside the point. Uh, but oh, yeah, I, I do like to go. I, I grew up in Southern California, so I'd go to the West Hollywood it's huge Halloween festival right on Hollywood Boulevard. They close off yes. or uh, Santa Monica Boulevard. They close off the whole thing. So I've, I've had a lot of fun at them and I've thrown a couple of really cool parties, but it's not my big season. How is it for you? <laughs> Talk to me what Halloween's like for you in October. Well, surprisingly enough, it's pretty tame. Um, I think this is the first year that I'm really going to go all out. I'm probably going to have like a whole haunted house going on here. Um, I'm probably going to scare a few kids, but um, yeah, like it's, it's pretty tame. I just, I love the whole atmosphere and the whole vibe of the whole season Um, because it, I mean, once Halloween hits, it's like, the year just flies by and then we have Thanksgiving right. and Christmas, which I also agree is the best time. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I just, I think I just like love this time. Cause it, I mean, Halloween, it's an excuse to just dress up and be a fool the whole night. Um, right. Yeah. So I normally, I will just like go have a drink or, or go out maybe go to a few parties, but this year has been really chill so far. I mean, we haven't even hit like official spooky season. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely want to maybe go to Halloween horror nights or go to like a party. Now, do you two. have anything? <laughs> I live near Cedar point, which is like a huge six flags with some of the best roller coasters in the world. They do a great scary night. I know, uh, Knott's Berry Farm down in Anaheim, California, a great scary night. Do you have any cool scary nights by you that you'll go to, that you like to go to in NorCal? Um, there's one. I believe it is It is in Sanger, California. It's a bit of a drive. Um, mm. it's, called, it's called Hobbs Grove, and it's fairly popular in the Central Valley. Um, so I might go there, um, but that's one of those places where they, they kind of don't change it up every year um Uh, so i mean i like i kind of know like what to expect already and i i the reason why i'm drawn to halloween horror nights is because every year there's something different right no that makes sense do you like like... to go to uh, haunted houses I I do. My trouble is that um, I kind of can't see when a strobe light happens, so I get freaked oh, out yes. by strobe lights. Um, it just I get totally blind for some reason. My eyes can't handle it, and so then someone will scare me, and I'll do that jumping we talked about earlier, <laughs> and I'll look like a fool. But, oh my god! Yeah, I, I love a good haunted house. I think they're fun, um, but a strobe lights that little part of it always messes me up for some reason. But I do like them. Can I ask, what's then, the last scary movie that you've watched? 
Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's been so long. I would say probably either one of the later Halloweens or one of the later poltergeists. Like I couldn't see my friends keep trying to get me to go to see Saw. I won't see that. Um, it's just, there's so many now, like <laughs> what's all the nun things out now. And oh, so there's yes. just all sorts of, the there's this too. horror movie. Literally every week comes out a horror movie though. Aren't they making a jillion of those? Don't you find yourself seeing a lot of them? Uh, there is. Yeah. There like, there's a new exorcist film coming out. And, um, for me, it, for me and like the whole like paranormal, like demon horror films, I, I normally don't geek out over those just because, um, in the past, uh, some of them have just been poorly produced and they're not very <laughs> good. They're poorly executed. Right. Um, I had just seen the new nun, which it was okay. Um, but no, so I, I, I kind of. I'm very judgmental when it comes to that. Like I'll look at the preview and like, if, if I don't like what I see in the trailer, then I'll be like, eh, I think I'll skip this one. So there is a lot, a mm-hmm. lot of horror films coming out, but I don't necessarily watch them all. Gotcha. Yeah. Cause they seem to make a new one every other week. So yeah, yeah. That's, that's kind of wild. I like the suspenseful TV shows. Like I was a huge Buffy the vampire fan. Oh my gosh. That and yes. Angel and yes. Yes. One of my good friends from the podcast here is like really besties with Sarah Michelle G- Michelle Geller, and no I would way. like live and die to have her on the show. I don't. I, I oh my gosh. I'm the kind of person that I can't ask my friends for other guests. Like I yeah. know, I've been so lucky through my podcast to get to know a lot of really cool people. Then then they all know really cool people that I like to talk to. But yeah. I'm too embarrassed to ever ask anyone. But she would be the one person I may ask Stephen. Um, can you want to give Buffy my address here and see if Sarah wants to talk sometime? Send her some clips, yes. <laughs> oh my god, the new wolf pack. I mean, she does fantastic. The guys are gorgeous. She's such a great I mean, actress. It's, it's a lot of fun. Oh, she's so good. She's so good. Love her. And I love her husband. I mean, she's oh a my great gosh, yeah. LGBT icon, man. but <laughs> Freddie Prinze is gorgeous in his own right. And uh, a pretty good actor himself. So yeah, yes. definitely. All those, all those movies where he would come out, I, like she's all that. Summer Catch, where he would be shirtless. I was front and center. I was, <laughs> oh my gosh, this man is so beautiful. There you go, a little Freddie infatuation. <laughs> I hear you on that, my friend. Um, now, what are your kind of future goals? For the podcast, what do you have? I mean, you're doing this weekly, right? You have a new one come out every Tuesday. I think you're 36 episodes into the year. Do you yes. plan on going every week? Do you plan on taking hiatuses? How do you plan? How do you see the podcast moving forward from here? Yeah, um, I definitely do want to incorporate some form of video in the near future. Um, like you said, like that's that's what all the cool kids are doing now. Um, like maybe some episodes I'll do video and then like some, like the other ones that I just mainly do storytelling, I'll keep those just audio, uh, but definitely video. Um, and yeah, I'll, I do take little breaks here and there. Uh, I'll probably take a break during Christmas time. Cause I think I'm, I'm hitting, I'm hitting one year, one baby year in November and I, November 15th Ooh, to be exact. Yeah. I know, I know. It's so crazy how fast the whole year goes by. Um, but yeah, I just, I want to keep going because again, I just, I've loved connecting with so many different people and just to finally co- uh, find my little community. It's just, it's, it's been so great. Uh, so like my, my first year is coming up uh, mid November to be exact. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I do take hiatuses here and there. Um, Probably in December, I will take my hiatus and then I'll be back with season three. But, but yeah, like I, I have, I have big dreams for this little podcast of mine and like the whole just connecting with other people. It's, that's my favorite part. It's really putting me out there. It's really me stepping out of my comfort zone. Um, And it's, it's just, it's been so great just to hear different people's stories. 
That is awesome. Well, you are killing it, my friend. What's What do you do when you're not podcasting? How do you unwind? I mean, this takes up so much time, and I know you yes. work full time <laughs> as well. How, how do you kind of unplug and rewind? Is going out to a movie do it for you? Or are you a home person? Or do you like to go out? What what kind of how do you <laughs> how do you spend your downtime? Well, I live by this mantra. Um, not really a mantra, but I basically I love when people cancel on me because I am a big homebody. I just, <laughs> I love to be in comfy clothes and my slippers and oversized shirts and just just being home with with uh, my two dogs and I play video games here and there. I'm a huge geek when it when it comes to video games. Um, but yeah, like I'll I'll go have a drink or two with um, some some friends. We have get-togethers, uh, but yeah, it's I'm pretty normal. <laughs> but nice. then again, what is normal? Like what is normal? Yeah, really. For anybody, that's dang true. I for, I agree. Well, I got to tell you, Ralph, it's been a very exciting to have you on the show. I hope everyone who enjoys a little bit of true crime, a little bit of horror, a little bit of LGBT, a little bit of everything. Listen yes. to the Scream Queer podcast. New episodes every Tuesday. You're just killing it, my friend. Thanks so much for coming on Thank the show today. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. Let everyone know where they can find you on social media so they can see some of this amazing artwork and let them know what's coming on the uh, episodes ahead. Well, I do have a few collabs coming up um, on mine and other podcasts that are just so exciting. Um, I have one coming up. I believe um, soon where I speak to a paranormal expert uh, and just the stories and the experiences that, that she shares are just so phenomenal. It's, it's crazy. Um, and you can find me. I'm most active on Instagram um, at scream queer podcast, or if you want to follow my personal Instagram, it's at Ralph Anthony with three Y's. Um, I do have a YouTube channel, but I'm not really active on there. I just I just watch videos and like other people's content. Um, but <laughs> never say never. I might start posting on there in the near future. But yeah, it's mainly Instagram right now. There you go. And you are killing it there, my friend. Anthony, thank you so much for being on The Leftist Show today. And enjoy your spooky season. Thank you for having me. All right, stay on the line for me, guys. We're going to have a special five questions with Anthony next Tuesday. Look for that. We're going to have all sorts of fun. Um, Check out Anthony's podcast, guys. You're going to enjoy every second of it if you're into all that kind of fun horror. And like I said, there's mixed with LGBT stories, some great fan interaction. And I just love this podcast. So enjoy it. We'll see you next time. You're listening to the Left of Straight Show right here on the Left of Straight Radio Network. Bye-bye, everyone. Thanks for listening to the Left of Straight Show. Be sure to subscribe on your favorite podcast distributor and please give us a five-star rating so more listeners can find us. You can follow us on social media and be sure to check out our website, www.leftofstraightradio.com for contests and other news and information. See you next week.